and get the tea from me. LVB. Hey everyone and welcome back to another episode of What's the Gossip and today is a rather special episode as our guest is pop star royalty. On this very day 20 years ago she was number one for four weeks in a row with Hole Again. Welcome my new bestest best friend Liz from Atomic Kitten. Now do I call you Liz, Elizabeth or Jeff? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jeff. I prefer Jeff these days. No, I am um, Liz. It's always been Liz, hasn't it? Or Lil. I don't know. Yeah. I kind of like Jeff. Oh, okay. You can call me Jeff if you want. Yeah, fine. But but I'd like it G-E-O-F-F, not G-J-E-F-F. <laughs> God, that was really hard to spell that. <laughs> I don't think you spelled that correctly just then, did you? Jeff, Jeff, J, some people spell it G-E-O-F-F, don't they? G-E-O-F-F. Why do people do that? Yeah, like spell the names like weird. <laughs> then they moan that they can't get their name on a key ring. <laughs> just go for your initial. Just do, yeah, just go for your initial. Says me with Lee, <laughs> L-E-I-G-H. Do you know what? That's true. That is, yeah, that's true. So to quote Mean Girls, so what is up? What's the 4 on one What has everyone been up to? What's the hot gossip? Tell me <laughs> everything. What have you guys been listening to? What are the cool jams? Oh my God, that was verbatim. Pretty much. <laughs> um... Uh, what's the four one one? Um, Not the band, the four one one. What is the four? I mean, I don't, I don't know anything. Do you remember the band, the four one one? Do I remember the? No. What does that mean? You know, that'd be dum dum diggy di dum a dum one none. Oh, that was a tune, yeah. wasn't it? That was a proper tune. Um, but yeah, every everything's blooming boring to be honest. To be quite. So honest. what are you doing to kill time in lockdown? I am killing the time by being super. I've turned into like a bookworm. To be quite honest, like everyone's like Netflix is awesome. So I did a bit of Netflix and I just then then I started um then I started learning going back to languages really, just learning my, my French and my Korean and a bit of Japanese, but I gave it up because it was really hard. So I'll go back to that another time. And um and I'm not getting very far with either of them, but you know, it's something to do. <laughs> it passes the time. Have you been watching Drag Race UK by any chance? Uh, no, I haven't watched it since the Vivian. Oh, I love the Vivian. She's so good, isn't she? I know. I I met the Vivian. I <gasps> actually know the Vivian. I've got the Vivian's number. I'm just so happy about Ooh, that. I know the Vivian through uh, my friend Bag of Chips. Oh, cool, yeah. cool. So yeah, we run in the same circles. So no, do you know what though? I'm I'm gonna have one of those um those nights where I do the do it all because my um my brother's fiance absolutely loves it and she's gonna I like it when she talks me through it to yeah. be honest. So I am going to have one of those a binge nights. watch. Yeah, I, I'm going to have one of those nights where I just have a shed load of uh, alcohol in the fridge and just do it all at once. <laughs> oh, my God. In Coventry, there's a bar called The Yard and they did um, the viewing parties. Oh, my God. It was amazing. It was just a room full of like gay guys just screaming their heads off. Oh, I would off. love that. Do you know, I, I have actually seen that because I think for the final, I'm, I'm sure I saw footage and I'm pretty sure it was in Liverpool, obviously. For the final, they had a viewing party in Liverpool, but obviously because of Vivian. And um and when she won, it just went absolutely nuts. So um yeah, that was that looked really good. And I was like, I want to be there. But then I saw the footage when we were in lockdown, so I really wanted to be there. But when yeah. season one was on, with uh, Bagger had told me who went home every episode, and the bar did a competition where you had to guess who went home each episode to win like uh, free bottles of prosecco. <laughs> so every week, I turned up and I was like to my friends, the answer is gothy kendall you know <laughs> something wrong and every week they went and the winner is and they went oh for god's sake not again and they went you can't keep doing this one there's no rule that says i can't do this <laughs> that is so naughty i mean i absolutely i totally love it and i would absolutely do it myself but it's really naughty um we have a mutual friend who i got hooked on drag race by the name of shelly frost oh really does she love it yeah I love Shell. Just before we went into lockdown, I was on the season four um, Club Kids tour. Mm. So um, we were staying in Manchester and straight away, Shelley Frost was like, where are you staying? And I was like, holiday. And she was like, I'll be there in five. And she was there, sat at the bar, glass of wine. <laughs> um, she had no clue what was going on. And my friend, uh, no. he was like, who is this person? I went, just let her speak. And he went, why? And I was like, yeah. you'll think she's insane. <laughs> But you will cross a threshold with her and then you realise everything she says is solid gold. She's brilliant, Shell. I absolutely, I've, I've, I've loved her from the day I met her. I absolutely love Shelly, I do. Yeah. She's the best. She's brilliant. And do you know what? I haven't, I haven't seen her for ages. Oh. Absolutely. I, I'd love to see her. I haven't seen her for absolutely ages. It's always a good night with Shelly. Uh, the last time we went out on Canal Street, she dragged her underage son out with us. It was, <laughs> it, we had an absolute scream. <laughs> Oh. So apart from Drag Race, what else have you been watching? So obviously you've got your Bridgerton 
um did a bit of that because um the guy is just like insane my friend <laughs> uh, my friend um becky we went for like a, a walk around um one of the local parks here yeah. like a couple of weeks ago and she was like oh my god have you seen bridgerton the guy se- sexiest man i've ever seen he was like do you think do you think it's because of lockdown i think that i was like no i think it's because he's the sexiest man anyone's <laughs> ever seen he's like hot but um so yeah bridgerton um what else oh my god there's loads and i can't even think um have you been watching the haunting of uh, the cecile hotel i well i've just i'm halfway through episode three um and, and I fell asleep when when they were talking about some they were talking about some really some scary guy that dresses up and records music and I can't remember what his name was and I was oh, just the, like, the, the weird gothy guy yeah yeah like he's got yeah. a, like a monster he said he's got like a monster inside him and I was like oh and I, I was falling asleep <laughs> and it was like midnight and I was like I'm really scared I don't want to watch this anymore so where did um, these people come from you know when people say like people were accusing him of stuff on the internet like of yeah. killing Elisa Lam. Um, which is a bit previous, but you know that's the internet. Um, and he was, and he was like, but he then recorded a song or something like that. I, I need to watch it again because I was falling asleep. But he like went along with it for a bit, didn't he? Yeah. And I'm like, why? Why would you do that? That's like really, don't do that. You could actually, yeah. you know, get yourself into a lot of trouble. But I don't. So I don't know any more than that. But I'm really, I love that because there's another program about that Cecil Hotel. I love the way they call it Cecil as well. There's another program about that on discovery plus or something that you can get on sky it's like a haunted program like a ghost hunting Ooh. program and it's actually that. quite scary to be honest i don't it's like i don't believe them and then i'm like oh my god jesus christ this is horrendous <laughs> so i love oh that i do love anything to do with the uh, cecil hotel as they like to say i watched the whole thing in one sitting as usual because i four have hours really? yeah i've got nothing else to do i'd literally just sat True. there and watched it back to back if i don't watch it all in one go i forget what's happened yeah, no, I've done, yeah, I, I had to go back a little bit. I have the memory of a goldfish. <laughs> I had to go back a little bit, but um, what else is there? Oh, my God. Have you watched Framing Britney? I have watched Framing Britney. Of course I have. And what's our thoughts, Liz McLaren? Um, I mean, Jeff. Jeff, yes, thank you. G- gee off. <laughs> um, my thought, oh, do you know what? I, I'm going to say, so I, I put it on thinking, oh, here we go. This is going to be so interesting. Like, you know, like, you know, the way when you go onto Twitter and then you get into a thread and you're like, oh my God, this is so interesting. I thought I had that kind of frame of mind, like a bit like everyone is with Britney, sort of like that sort of voyeuristic kind of, oh, oh my God, we're going to have an insight into this and it's really interesting. But I mm. came, I, when I finished it, I was really, really, really sad. And I mean, like, not like, oh my God, that's really sad. Like really quite hurt inside for, for her and felt like, a, I felt a bit dirty mm. myself, to be honest. You know, a bit sort of, I think all of us have added to that sort of culture, haven't we? That kind of, we, we say leave her alone, but we want to know what happens to her and, and other people like that. And I think it's really, I was really sad heart most, most of the way through that, to be honest. The bit that broke my heart was um, as soon as she got famous and she went home and she took out 10K just to give <gasps> out to people. And I was thinking, yeah. obviously nowadays people would have to film it. They'd have to put it up on YouTube, you know, to yeah. be like, and she literally just drove around handing out money. And I was thinking that's the real her. And the fact that it's come to this point 13 years later where she has no rights whatsoever. And this, mm. it's not understandable why she doesn't have any actual rights because the worst thing they could really point out that she'd done was she hit a car with an umbrella. Yeah. Like I'm, um, We've all done worse to a car. Oh yeah, let's be real. Any, any, a couple of exes cars, definitely. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. <laughs> she shaved her, her head. Like at the time, it was shocking. But you're thinking in the headspace they painted for her at now, where you're thinking she was just like, "Leave me alone. I don't want to be touched. I don't want to be a product anymore." Yeah. What better way to sabotage yourself than to shave all your hair off? Absolutely. But because they can, I mean, so okay, coming from coming from being a member of a Tom kitten that kind of perspective not even one hundredth of britney's success but you know knowing success yeah. to an extent um it you it's it's it is really hard to there are those days where you're just like how can i make them not how can i get them to not make me work like how i i'm ill and i can barely walk and they're saying oh just take this and you'll be fine or do this and you're in your head you're like why do you not understand like And for your family to then do that to you is just like mind blowing. So then, like you've just said, you actually have would have to sabotage the situation. And what is the worst thing? Make yourself look like you're just not 
fit to work and that is shave your hair off that I think to me that was just like wow absolutely and the guy the pap guy that then says oh yeah he was like all I said to her was I'm just gonna ask you a few questions and then I'm gonna leave you alone it's like you don't have a right to effing do that anyway like like Mm -hmm. like she should be okay with that well you weren't meant to be there like you're the you know you're the only person there that was you know he said it great for him because it was a good payday but mm. like she she thought she was just going to go and see her kids and now you're saying i'm just going to ask you a few questions like she's like she's everyone else's property and that was especially in the 90s and early noughties that was a big thing that you were that was the thing that came across if you were on you were famous you were everyone else's property like totally and utterly like it was there's no question about that you had mm. no no you hadn't if you turned around to someone and said don't you dare touch me or don't you dare do that you had an attitude and it was just like, mm. and especially being a woman, oh my God, defo. I thought it was uh, disgusting that he'd stalked her the entire night, saw what went down, and then he said in the interview, she asked me to leave her alone for tonight. And I was thinking, no, she yeah. didn't. She only meant today. And I was thinking, what are you on about? How dare you sit there right now trying to excuse yourself for stalking her the entire night? Yeah. Knowing full well that she wasn't allowed to see her kids. So then you followed her to a petrol station. But yeah. to be fair, credit where credit's due. She looked lovely with a shaved head. No one can look that nice. There are only two women I've ever seen look like that. And that's Demi Moore and Britney Spears. Oh, absolutely. Like, you've got to have that perfect shaped head, haven't you? I mean, I think I would not look like that at all. I'd look like one of those characters from Coneheads, if you remember that film from like the 90s. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. With, um, oh, Dan Aykroyd. Dan yeah. Yeah. There we know Brilliant him. <laughs> So was there ever a moment in your career where you just snapped like that? Oh, yeah, totally. Well, firstly, what was really interesting I wanted to say to you actually yeah. about that was that um, it popped into my head before that someone was to, saying about she clearly had postnatal depression. They call mm-hmm. it postpartum, don't they? Yeah. Um, depression. And it was really interesting because Tash and I were talking about that the other day, about her having postnatal depression mm-hmm. when we were finishing up Atomic Kitten. And we were talking about like me saying I didn't even know and Mm. um, sort of these days Tash and I are extremely close and we have this thing about we bring things up every now and again and we sort of dissect it a little bit and um, get into it in a totally neutral way. There's never any arguments or anything, but we just want to understand what happened at the time. Yeah. And um, and I always say to her about like, I I just didn't know. I didn't know that that was going on with you. And she said and she said such a really interesting thing the other day. And she said, but we were all kids. How how were you going to, I was a kid having a baby going through this and you were a kid and you didn't have a baby. How would you, you didn't, you didn't know about postnatal depression. You were just like, what's wrong with her? She said, but so, so I don't have any issue towards you about that. And I was like, oh my God, that's mega. Yeah. And but looking at the Britney thing, it's clear, it's clear that she must have had a bit of that as well. Mm. Must have, must have, must have. And she was young having a child and it's just, I, I, I just likened it so much to Tash, which hurt me even more. Obviously, I was just like, oh, my God, I know this. Yeah. This is so sad to watch. So that was a, a big thing for me. So what were you, What was your question? I just totally I just totally took that away, didn't I? What did you say, sorry? It was, was there ever a moment in your career where you nearly snapped? Oh, yeah, there was a couple. For me, um, it was a time when I lost the plot so much that I could hear one song going round and round and round in my head, and it was like, it was a Gabrielle song that was going round and round in my head. It wasn't out of reach, was it? I'm, I don't know. I've got no idea. <laughs> but it was being shouted at me in my head. Like I'd totally lost any kind of grasp on reality at that point. And I was, I, we had like a day off and I was in my mum's house and I was putting some washing in or something. And I could just hear this song and she had like this utility room. And I was sitting on the floor of the utility room holding my head because this song was going like just repeating loudly like someone was shouting the lyrics in my head and it wouldn't stop and I don't know I can't remember what happened for it to stop I think it was like a few days later but um you know everyone they the record company tried to get me to work that day but my mum was like you know everyone needs to leave my house like she's not going anywhere she's absolutely she's listening to Gabrielle yeah and there's no music playing you know what I mean it was like really scary but um so she was so that was um I remember that and there are other times where you just just physically can't walk but there's nothing wrong with you yeah be honest yeah but there's nothing wrong with you you just can't you can't your brain can't make your feet like legs go in front of the other and it sounds like so for years we were always like we always had to finish sentences like that with but I'm really grateful you know it's still the best job in the world 
and it's it's not a lie it's an awesome job but it's really really tough sometimes it's really tough sometimes and I can't imagine what it would have been like at that level there was a pit there was a footage of her in the in a cafe and they're just like she's in a corner she's trapped it was just petrified oh my god yeah there was like there was like 60 of them all over and she sat in a corner trying to like eat a sandwich oh my god I was just I felt sick at that point I just I love the girl I I I love the girl I think she, I've, I've always thought she was awesome have you ever met her do you know what? I was just trying to think that I don't think I've ever met Britney no I think if you'd met Britney you'd remember Britney of course yeah I met Beyonce you know Ooh. who I absolutely adore but um, no, I don't think I've ever met Britney. The footage of her in Starbucks and she's just like, I, I just know want my Frappuccino. Yeah. Do you know what? I didn't, I sort of, because she's been doing a lot of stuff in America really, hasn't she? So I, I sort of stopped paying a bit of attention to her really. Not, that sounds bad. I mean, like just sort of, she went out of my head a bit. And then it was yeah. a while ago that my friend, um, oh, mm-hmm. I was getting my nails done. My friend was doing my nails. And she was like, have you seen Britney Spears um, on Instagram? And I was like, I follow her, but I haven't really seen the post. Like, what, what are you talking about? And she was like, don't you think they're a bit weird? And that's when this whole, like, free Britney thing was, like, coming like you know coming out. Like, some yeah. of the things she posts, you're just like, well, I'm, I'm not sure what's going on here. Like, this is, like, what is that? What is the message behind this? And and so my, I remember Gemma, who does my nails, she was like, don't you find it really sad, like, the way that they're totally controlling her? And then all she can do is post like pictures of her dancing on the internet. Like that's, that's the only thing she's got control over. And you know, when you sat there in silence for like most of like, normally with when I'm getting my nails done, I'm chatting away. But I was just sat there for the whole like sort of session going, oh, oh my God, that's really sad. Did you know that she's not the one that posts on Instagram? No, what do you mean? She submits a load of videos or photos that she's taken with caption suggestions and then they filter through which ones they want to post. Short. Oh. Yeah, so then she posted a photo. How did you know that? Because the girl who runs her Instagram is called Cassie and she was getting dragged all over Twitter like so badly that she quit as well. So it's it's that controlled. Yes, yeah, so she doesn't even she doesn't even post on her Instagram. She takes a load of photos or videos and they they just pick which ones they think they want to post. Oh my god, she's seriously isolated. Yeah, I, I don't even think oh, she has Wi Fi in the house. Oh. oh my god. Did you see when her son went live? No. <gasps> Liz, you need, I mean, sorry, Jeff. <laughs> as soon as this is finished, you need to go on YouTube and find it. He spilled all the tea, he called his granddad a dick. He said that he wanted to help his mum get out of the conservatorship. Oh my God, it was iconic. So when, so, and that was on his Instagram then? Yeah, he went live on his Instagram account. Yeah, and, you yeah. Know, like, once you're live, there's nothing they could do about it. And he was on there for about Brilliant. 10 minutes. And, you know, we screen recorded. That's what we do. <laughs> and his account got pulled down. And then they tried to say it wasn't him. And then obviously they were like, yeah, it was him. He shouldn't have done that. And then he made another account saying that he wanted, I think it was like 5,000 subscribers on YouTube. And he was going to do a video exposing the whole thing. And then magically that account disappeared as well. But Oh, my God. So even her kids want her out of it. So, but then isn't that surely that's that, like... That he, they can't control him though, so that's that's interesting. His dad, Kevin Federline, obviously gets paid out of the the team, so I assume there must be a loophole uh, somewhere that they can work with that. Oh my god, that is like seriously scary stuff. It's like it, the rabbit hole. You've just like pushed me down this rabbit hole now. For God's sake! So apparently, Netflix now are actually working on a whole documentary series on Free Britney now, which is going to be solid gold oh my god i mean i'm, I'm in i'm the rabbit hole is I'm like i'm I'm just like i've drank the kool-aid i tell you what i want to watch a whole entire episode though on her assistant felicia oh isn't she fab oh my god isn't she cute oh my god i was just oh what who do i, I who did i ring before oh my god or oh, my friend and i was like oh you need to see this assistant this felicia and she was like why and i was like when she was talking about Eurostar, I just thought, oh my God, that's so cute. Oh my God. When she was like, we were on the train under the sea and it was the most cool thing ever. Yeah, I was like, that is so lovely. So when she showed off the plaque oh. and she was like, this is for 11 million sales of Baby One More Time. That means she sold 11 million copies. And I was like, okay, yeah. we kind of know. Oh, oh bless. No, but she, she, had a, she seems like she's got a good heart though, doesn't she? But like you've just said, she's the one, she shared that. I never, no, no one knows that about the whole Britney thing when she got 10 grand out of the bank and did that with the $100 bill thing, I know. you know, when, when she went home. Like, no one knows that. Like, she's a, she's a good person. I just feel sad as hell, man. And also the whole, the whole thing about the dad at the beginning, like he was never around. Mm. When he said, uh, my daughter's going to be so rich, she's going to buy me I've a seen, boat. I've seen that footage oh, of him God. when he talks about the cheese grits before. 
And I always assumed that was quite early on. Um, but obviously that was from, that was recently um, when he first got like control of the, what did you, what do you call it? I can't, Conservatorship. I can't properly. Conservatorship. Okay. I can't say it. I don't know. Cause it's just never been a part of my, like, it just doesn't make sense to me at all. Um, yeah. And, and I was like, oh, they seem quite, he seems very staid, doesn't he? And, and also just one more thing that Kevin Federline, when they get interviewed, when, um, when they're on Ellen, I remember, I've seen, I saw that footage ages ago, obviously. And just coming back to it now, when they're on Ellen and the way he sat on the couch, I'm just like, with all due respect to you, mate, you're not the famous one. And like, you're just slumped on the couch, like you're like P Diddy or something, you know, like you've worked hard for like two decades to get where you are and you actually haven't, you know what I mean? Do you remember when um, some award show asked her to perform and she said, no, but I'll introduce my husband performing. Do you remember she paid for him to have a, a music career and he brought out one song? Oh my God, <laughs> yes. And he came out and it was like, it was like a mashup of Justin Timberlake and P Diddy. And it was just like, the worst track of all time. And I was thinking, how are you performing at an award show for music industry like superstars and you your wife has waddled out on stage pregnant to introduce you like we don't want to see you oh my god i totally remember that now you said that oh it was yes. awful and she paid for the whole thing oh my god it's painful to watch painful so we want to free Poor britney thing. that's what we want to do we do yes absolutely Poor britain come on liz we'll meet at the airport and we'll fly i mean sorry i mean come on jeff we'll meet at the airport and we'll fly <laughs> over and save britney we'll get over to la and we'll get her out i'll print the t-shirts so, 20 years ago, you were number one for four weeks in England with Hole Again. Wow. Does that feel like 20 years ago to you? Some days it feels like longer, some days it feels like last week. And no, it never feels like last week. It feels like a long time ago, actually, but sometimes it feels like longer. Hadn't the record label dropped you as you were heading for number one? Well, this is, see, now, this is the thing that everybody talks about this, but we didn't know that at the time, you know. At the time, obviously, they kept it from us because they wanted us to be quite positive with everything going on because Kerry uh, wanted to leave and stuff. Yeah. Well, I'd left. And so I was a bit like, oh my God, what are we doing? Like, I don't understand what's happening. And I got really upset and Tash was really strong um, and she uh, was there for me. And, um, but so obviously that happened around that time. And um, so they, they didn't tell us. So we only know that in hindsight. So everyone goes, how did you feel? I'm like, mm, pretty much the same as I did the day before because <laughs> I didn't, we didn't know. So yeah. But it's weird, isn't it, how it can just go from apps, the depths of, you know, your, your career has absolutely plummeted and it's not working for you to, oh, by the way, you are like the biggest girl band at the moment. Mm. We're like, what? Oh, okay. Awesome. Thanks very much. So how did you get started in Atomic Kitten? How did you go from school to being in a girl band? Um, so I had, I went to a drama school um, and I had singer lessons. Um, my singing teacher just, introduced, I was really, I didn't like to do auditions because I was quite, even though I went to drama school, I was quite a shy person. And um, uh, everyone used to do auditions all the time. And she introduced me to some guys. And they said they wanted to start a girl band. And then they said, oh, you're in this girl band. And then two days later, she said, I don't want you to be in this girl band because I want you to meet somebody else. And I was like, okay. She said, you're going to meet this guy called Andy McCluskey. He wants to start a girl band. And I was like, oh, okay. So she introduced me to Andy McCluskey. And he then said, you, you definitely look the part. I hope you can sing. And he got me to sing right now. And then he went, yeah, I definitely want you in the band, by the way. Do, can you come back tomorrow and do some dancing? And I was like, yeah, okay. And then I met Kerry the next day. And then that was pretty much me done. That was it, really. It just went from went on from there. It was a bit of a blur from then onwards. <laughs> so you went straight from school to a record deal? Yeah. I mean, and also the day I went to meet Andy was the day I got my GCSE results as well. It's really, it's like a weird day. So I'd got, I got into the sixth form school I wanted to get into. Because I was going, I can't. I wanted to do all sorts of things. I changed so it was my just mind. Every massive week, blur, and you were on top of the park for a career. And um, but I needed to. I needed um, good GCSEs to get into this sixth form school, and I got them. And I was like, "Yeah, you can get to this sixth form school." And then I went, "Oh no, I want to do music now because this sounds really good." And mum was like, "You are like, you are just so scatty, right? Do this for a year. You've got a year, and then you have to go back if it doesn't work." And I was like, "Okay," and then it worked. So yeah, and here we are today, chatting about it. On my podcast. <laughs> so the original lineup of Atomic Kitten, uh, the music was very commercial, bubblegum pop. But in hindsight, I didn't realise your music was on like all of these teen movie soundtracks of the early 2000s. Yeah, I know it's mad, isn't it? So we, so Sia 
was our second single and I just like the cheesiest song ever. It's like super cheese. I still play Sia in the shower. I love it. Okay, so I... That's so good. That was the first song I ever co-wrote, like ever. And I was 60, 17, 16 or 17 because Andy wanted to go and watch the football and he said, we still need some, um, we, we need the bridges and some of the chorus for this song, Sia. Will you write it? And I was like, okay. And he said, so you stay in here and I'll go and watch the second half of this fo- the football game across the road in the pub. And I was like, okay. So when he came back, he said, oh, this is pretty good. I think you've got a career in this. So then I was one of the co-writers on that. And then when it was in Bring It On, uh, which I, I, I fucking that, love I Bring It On. It is such a good movie. I'm brilliant in it. I mean, it's only like a tiny bit of the song, but I made my boyfriend wait till the very end credits so we could see my name as one of the writers at the bottom. Oh, in the cinema. <laughs> yeah, in the cinema. And it was just, <laughs> that was one of my favourite moments ever, just where everyone had gone. And I was like, wait, 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 it's nearly there, it's nearly there, because obviously it's right at the end, isn't it? And I was just like, yeah. So then you went from having your name in the end credits of Bring It On to having Hilary Duff lip syncing it in the Lizzie McGuire movie. What was, was the, did that just blow your mind? It's weird, isn't it? Because we were like, why is she lip syncing? It's our song. It sounds like she's, like she's singing it. But no, uh, no, we, we thought it was like nuts. We were like, that's pretty big. Because obviously Lizzie McGuire wasn't actually that, uh, it was maybe, it wasn't huge over here, was it? It wasn't absolutely huge, but it was, and it was younger anyway. But it's weird these days because you get like big stars now who are like mm. mid twenties who sing like go on Instagram and sing the tide is high because they loved Lizzie McGuire and they loved the Lizzie McGuire movie. So, and they don't even know it was Atomic Kitten, and, but they're like, so, and then people link us in to stuff like we had, what was it? Um, Gigi Hadid, it wasn't it? Oh, was no, it Bella. G- yeah, Gigi Hadid, yeah. Bella. Was it Bella Hadid? I'm, I don't know. Anyway. And yes, yeah, she's all over. She's on the, on the beach one day and then she's in the car singing the tide is high. And I was like, you like sending it to everyone. You're like, that's fucking me. That's me. Yeah. I was like, look at this girl. Oh my God. But yeah, no, that was that's pretty awesome. Things like that are still awesome. So we fast forward, yeah. um, comes up to the lineup change, Kerry's out, Jenny's in. How did that come about? How was mm. that conversation? Mm. Who decided that Jenny was going to join? So, well, Tash was really close to her because she they used to bump into each other in the in the clubs in London a lot whenever we'd get time off, which actually wasn't that often. But she so she'd bump into her and um, <clears throat> and we like you say we saw her at TV shows, but Tash was closer to her because they'd have a couple of drinks together. And um, so when we were thinking about who, who else could be in the band, Tash said, well, what about Jenny? And I was like, oh, Jenny's really cool. And she said, well, I've got a number, shall I ring her? And, you know, everyone, like Martin and um, our manager and uh, Andy and that were just like, yeah, totally. She's, she looks awesome. You know, she knows that she knows the job because she's done it all. But yeah, let's ask her. And she was actually quite, I mean, I can't remember exactly, yeah. but she was, yeah, she was, yeah, she was, she was up for it. But um. But yeah, and then and then we just I grew really close to her, and then it just it, she was brilliant. The the memory I have of Jenny before before she joined Atomic Kitten was we were all at Top of the Pops, and obviously she was there with Precious, and she she had a cast on her foot. Or she had crutches, definitely had crutches, because she dropped a the, like an outdoor bin on her foot and broken a toe, and she had to do the whole performance with a, this broken toe, and she was an apt the poor girl. And I remember thinking she's so professional because. Before she went on, she was sobbing. And when she came off, she was sobbing. And on stage, you would not have known. She was just like, whatever, I'm doing this. And I was like, wow, she's really cool. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that was my memory of her. So when Tash said, shall I ring her? I was like, yeah, she's going to, yeah, she'll be like really cool. She'll be awesome. And then then it just got, we were just huge. So yeah. it was brilliant. So then Hole Again comes out and you're number one for four weeks in a row. Were you like to anyone, in your face, in your face? No, God, we were never, honestly, we were never like, honestly, no. I mean, we had attitude, but uh, we were never like that. We were never like, ha, like, you know, when it came to stuff like that, we were always really grateful for that. And that's why in the end, when we all did finish, we started to be less grateful and we noticed that. We all have agreed on that since. That it's weird when you get a bit less grateful. You're like, I don't think I even want to do this anymore. Like, I'm I'm sad and I'm not happy with any of it. And that's, and that's, you know, that's sad. So, you know, you have to like stop doing it. Um because we were just tired. In hindsight, we could have had, you know, like a year, a two year break, something like that and gone back. But you don't know that at the time, do you? You, you mm-hmm. know, you just want to, you just need some time to yourself. Um, but to be honest, being number one, the, when we first got to number one was more of an impact than it being number one for a month, which is weird. Like the second week, it was like, it's still number one. Oh my God. 
And then they were like, it's still number one and it sold more than the first week. Oh, and it's still number one this third week and it sold more than the week before that. Oh, and it's so weak. So it was even the fifth week when it got knocked off number one, it sold more than the week before. But I think I think it was Shaggy or something knocked us off. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. Yeah, I think it was. <laughs> so it even it sold more every week, but it just got knocked off number one. So, but when we first uh, got told we were number one and we'd beaten you two to number one, we were like, oh, that's just really frigging weird. Like, well. Does it blow your mind that back in the day when you went to number one, people had to physically go to the shop and buy the CD instead of just streaming? Yeah, and, like. And, you know, the, the numbers you did on those CDs, they're not even being matched by streaming platforms these days. Yeah, and people still had to go out and get absolutely like in the cold. You know what I mean? You couldn't get it delivered either. It was like you know, you'd get out there that day. It's weird, isn't it? It's so weird. Like somebody said to me. Now I don't know whether this is true or not, but was it on? Was it on a documentary or was it on? Or did someone tell me? Someone, I got the information that Hole Again was the last highest selling physical selling single ever. Now I don't know whether we're going to have to look that up, aren't we? I don't know how, how I don't know how you do that. But who told me that? Think, Jeff. Who told me that? I know. Yeah, I can't. Honestly, got no idea. I was sat in the same position where I am now in the corner, but on this chair, and someone was telling me, and I don't know who it was. It was the fourteenth biggest selling single of the entire decade, according That's to crazy. my little notes right here. And it crazy. was the what was it? The fourth bestseller of the year, which I, I believe that to be true. It was wow. on Wikipedia. It doesn't lie. It well, yeah. Wikipedia also says I'm 40 in two months, and that's not true. <laughs> You're 32. <laughs> exactly, darling. My friend just said to me the other day, she went, just lie. And I went, it's all over the internet when I was born. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, so then your album goes to number one. What's that like? Yeah. Oh, that was weird because it, we knew then it wasn't a fluke. We were like, oh, shit, people like us. Okay, what do we do now? Um, it, I oh. think the, the moment after that, when you start making the new album and start thinking about a single, is the scary, is the really scary time because you're like, oh, we're we not going to do that again. What all happens now? That's mm. the really scary minute. That's when it. That's when you start to. When the success comes, you start to grow up. Before that, everything was really good fun. I used to think it was really good fun before that, and then it got quite serious. Do you think it was because you'd hit such a high that you have to replicate that, otherwise everything else from then on is a failure? Absolutely. Every, anything less than that is a failure completely. And then, and also, you get bigger teams. There are more people like who, who whose job, you know, they rely on you for the job. You know, to an extent, like a lot of people in the record company, I know that they do other things. But then you get people who are part of your team, like your stylists, your tour managers, chaperones. We still had chaperones at one point. Um, Oh, makeup artist, hair, everything that that you, so many people like are involved. It's, it it becomes a lot of pressure, definitely. So so the success has to stick, and you're just like, oh crap. So then your next song, Eternal Flame, that was number one as well. Were you oh. at that point? Were you like, oh god, what the fuck have we done? Like, <laughs> yeah, because you're really taken off now. Yeah, but because um, we didn't want. We didn't want to sing Eternal Flame because they were like, we're going to, you're going to do it. Um, we were excited about what kind of vibe we were going to go down. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, and you know, what, like, what style after Hole Again. And they were like, oh, it's going to be a cover version. And we were all actually quite sad about that. We were like, oh, don't want it to be a cover version. But then once you hear the beat in it, um, and the producer who did that, um, he's passed away now. It was, it was passed away quite young. Uh, but he... It was just such a cool beat, like really. I love. I still to this day. I had to go. We we had a trip to Poland at the um sort of towards the end of last year when we had that break in the lockdowns that we had. And Tasha mm. and I went to Poland, and I had to get all like back and tracks together and stuff. And when Eternal Flame comes on, and the the beginning, just the back and track, I just love that beat so much with the guitar. I absolutely love it. So when we when they were like, you're going to sing Eternal Flame, we were like, absolutely not. And then they went, and this is it. We were like, absolutely fine with that. That's totally fine, yeah. <laughs> so it was really good. Um, uh, and then they were like, we're going to go really strange with the video. Like, you're going to like wear this like makeup. It's going to be like really weird. Like, you know, like it, it's not weird now. You know, you've got Gaga and stuff now. But at the time it was like, you know, a bit avant-garde, as they, as they like to say. It's fashion, um, darling. Where the... It was quite heavy in the sockets and stuff, and we were like, "I hate this makeup so much." <laughs> and and they were like, "No, no, it's gonna be, it's gonna be great, it's gonna be great." And then everybody hated it, and we had to go back in and reshoot it all. <laughs> really? Crazy. 
yeah yeah the whole record company were like no it's really awful we have to go back and reshoot the so they kept the um they kept the far away stuff well god i can't even like can't even think what you call it wide shots they, yeah yeah the wide there you go you're more professional um they just got rid they just re- redid the close-ups oh that explains it because in that video in some shots you're deathly pale in the other shots you're bright orange is that why <laughs> yeah do you know what i mean yeah yeah i do i totally do so that was the look they were going for with this like you know like contour like down the cheeks and in the eye sockets with and like really quite a pale face and really heavy eyebrows which actually is it's ahead of its time because that everyone loves that now but um but then we we loved to be deathly orange we absolutely loved a bit of, like spray tan oh, and you can't be it can you a bit of donald trump on the skin yeah yeah absolutely in the in like early 2000s that was the that was the thing completely but um, I lived in holiday skin for at least 10 years. Uh, yes, I, I remember, actually. I do remember. <laughs> Couldn't go nowhere without a bit of fake tan on. Oh, yeah, totally. Absolutely. I loved I loved fake tan. I'm embracing my um, paleness now after lockdown because no one's going to see me. So so. In the first lockdown, I avoided fake tan because I, was, I wasn't going anywhere. And it had been a solid month of just sitting in the house. And I thought, oh, I'll put it on. And then in the morning when I washed off, you know, you have the afterglow tan. I was like, I got emotional. I was like, there I am. (laughs) You're so pretty. Oh, you look so cute. (laughs) Right. Joke's over. Who do I blame for the cancellation of you are? Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. What what do you you say? What's your hashtag? Hashtag justice for you are. Justice for you. There it is. I have terrorized uh, Natasha on every live stream she does I for that know. She tells me about it. I'm like, sing you are. And she's like, Jesus Christ. And she inboxed me. She goes, I haven't even got the backing track. I went, give me 10 minutes and I'll get you a backing track. And she was like, for God's sake. <laughs> so, okay, there is a story behind you are. So, um, you remember, obviously, everybody remembers 9-11, really, you know, horrendous nice. times. We were there for that, um, and we were we were about to record the video for You Are um, out there. That's why we were there. Um, and I think Blue were there, and they were doing, um, I think it was for If You Come Back. They were recording uh, the video for If You Come Back in Brooklyn. And, um, and we were doing You Are, and w- one of our... Um, one of our scenes was in, they had the permission and everything. It was like a really big deal that we got permission was in at Grand Central Station. Mm-hmm. But obviously it was, uh, so the morning of 9-11, all of that happened. And they were just like, we can't, oh, everybody's permits totally understand for any kind of film or anything had been totally taken away because no one was safe. Like they didn't know what was happening with all the planes, etc. So we all had to, uh, we were all help, um, all together in a photo studio and I can't even remember where it was because our our hotel we couldn't stay in our hotel because it was only a couple of blocks away from the site from at ground zero they call it now don't they so mm. um so we we had to go to this photo studio anyway um and after that because we got stuck there for like the the record company had chartered planes to get us and uh, have because we were a small record company and both bands were there a lot of the record company was there with these two ba- our, our two bands because we were on the same label blue and atomic kitten um so they they chartered like tried to charter planes to get us home that they couldn't do that they got them taken off them which totally understandable um so we all got sent to a place called i think it's called Tarrytown or Ma- anyway th- there was an area just by brooklyn called something like Tallytown or Tarrytown and um and we all ended up staying there for like nearly a week and all our schedules got changed and everything because we couldn't fly out and then once we got back, it was because it was such a such a horrendous time, like for you know the world really. Um, the the if the song felt like it had like this, it was sad. You know what I mean? It had this mm. sort of sad thing to it. So they said we're going to record the video, and um, we did the video. It just you know in the studio, we've seen the video quite a few times, I'm sure. Um, mm-hmm. Great vi- great video. Um, they did it, and they were just like, no, it's just it's got it's like too sad. It, because we just associated this song with New York and this grand video we were going to do and it's going to be really special and it just, everyone got, you know, so they just uh, wrote off the money for um, the video and everything and just said we're going to go with something else. And it was, yeah, that's sad. And I, I agree with you, I love that song. It got released in Europe and it did really well. Um, but we but didn't, you- I don't, we didn't promote it or anything. 
What are you on about? You promoted it absolutely everywhere. You were on like CD UK and like Top of the Pops and T4. Did we? Did we promote it? Oh my God, I'm going to have to Google that. I mean, like anytime someone goes on about Atomic Kitten, they always go, oh, hole again, hole again. I was like, no, the best song by Atomic Kitten was always You Are. Yeah, well, I, I love, I really love the song. I totally agree. Um, I just, I, I really don't remember promoting it. Oh my God, isn't that weird? I do not remember promoting it at all. Do you know what? I, it would be lovely. It would be lovely to do that again. It really would be lovely to sing that song again because I really did love it. But it's just, it was just such a sad time, which I, I know everybody understands that. Um, it was just really, really weird. So it just didn't get any. Um, just didn't do it. But I totally forgot we promoted it. You're so right. This is all your fault, Jeff. <laughs> so you've got a connection to the Spice Girls as well, because you're the only girl band, apart from the Spice Girls, that had a number one single and a number one album at the same time. You must have been feeling pretty much like you were the shit at this point. Oh, my. Yeah. No, we felt like the shit, definitely. <laughs> no, we, are, we, we had at one point we had, what was it? A number one album, number one single, and something else was at number one at the same time. What was it? Something else. I've got a disc when it says it, and I can't even think. Was it our DVD or something? Maybe. I don't know. Anyway, but yes, that was... I didn't know that that was only us that did that. Well done, you, Jeff. Thank you. Oh, I love the Spice Girls. Spice Girls is like my... Oh, my, like, happy time. Did you go see the Spice Girls at the last tour? No, I didn't. Oh, I, I went three times. Oh, my God. I fully lost my wig. It was in orbit. <laughs> Off the planet. Gone. <laughs> I do love them though. I do. After the success of Atomic Kitten, how did you decide what you were going to do after the band when you all went on hiatus? I didn't want to do anything. I was really happy just writing. I was I was doing loads of writing, and then our manager said to me, "Oh, um, we've got a couple of record companies interested in you doing solo stuff." And I was like, "Me doing solo?" I really, honestly, was like, it was like he was speaking in German to me. I was like, "I don't know what you're talking about. Why would I do solo stuff?" And he was like, "Because you know what." A couple of record companies are interested and I was like what why he was like well, because it'll be good and I was you know and you just like I never pictured myself doing that I just thought I was going to be right and sort of relax I'm not really a limelight kind of person I love Atomic Kitten and I still love performing as Atomic Kitten and I love doing theatre and stuff like that but I'm not a I'm not a look at me look at me let this okay now I have to obviously I have to go solo because I need to be on stage I'm just I'm just not that person I'm like Oh, okay. If you think that'll work, I'll do that. Um, so I did it for a bit, and then and then when they said, right, your next song after Woman in Love is going to be a dance song, I was like, yeah, I'm done. I'm not doing this. I know it sounds really boring, but I really like plodding along in my life. I'm I'm always pretty happy. I'm always pretty chilled. Um, yeah, I'm just. I'm but you're lo a... you're loving lockdown then, life of a cat. No, I'm really frigging not loving lockdown at all. No, I hate it. De desperately hate it especially lockdown one was horrible enough but at least we had sunshine and you know everyone was really worried about money and you could see it on everyone's face and it was really scary um just everyone around you was just like you know worried about the jobs and it was really horrible the only plus was that it was nice and people could sit in their gardens mm. and, or you know go to the possibly go to the park for half an hour but um this the winter lockdown has just been abysmal like scarily so Scary. There's nothing worse than the 10k you spend on just eat just so you can feel something. Yeah, I put so much weight on, I, and then I, and then I went to went to go and see a nutritionist and lost a load of weight. And now I'm slowly putting it back on again, so I need to like start eating healthy again, and it's just so boring. What were you drinking in lockdown? Gravy. <laughs> yeah. Gravy and vodka, thanks very much. Um, <laughs> Make it a double. Oh, yeah, just anything. So then you you guys moved on to doing the big reunion. You brought Kerry back. Um, mm. I had Cav on last week, and he talked about how they kind of set him up for a, a bit of drama-rama. Did they try and do that with you guys? Or, oh, yeah, or did totally. you already have the drama? No, they totally did it with us, yeah. And I know what Cav's talking about, yeah, and it was, like, crazy, that. But um, uh, they do set you up for it. and. It's just not my cup of tea at all. I don't like... I'll watch a reality show, but I absolutely would never be in one. I mean, I was in First Love Island, and that was honestly an accident. Really was an accident. Like, they said, we want you to do this show. Do you fancy it? And I was like, go to Fiji? Yeah, it sounds awesome. Oh, you'll be doing lots of trials and blah, blah, blah. There'll be, like, six women and six men. I was like, oh, that sounds good. And then I got to Fiji, no joke, and they said, 
it's going to be called Love Island. I was like, what? Why is it called Love Island? Oh, because you're going to get paired up. Honestly, that's how it went. Um, so that was that. Um, I'm not really... A, I, I love watching reality shows. Uh, I'm a Celeb is my favourite show to watch. Absolute favourite because Ant and Deck are hilarious. But I would never want to be in a reality show. And then when we did Big Reunion, I was just like, this is my hell. Like, people this asking... This is my hell. Like, people asking, like, you know... And then start... The, and then, like, the whole... Like, bringing up the whole Lee Ryan thing for me. And I was just like, oh, my God, this is totally my hell. I just don't want to talk about private stuff. I don't want to talk about why I don't get on with someone. And I don't want to talk about why I don't want to speak to my ex-boyfriend. You know, it's just pretty simple, to be honest. Can't I just get on with my own life? I said to someone, I hope she didn't get PTSD because my name is Lee Bryan. <laughs> no, not, not one bit. Don't worry. No, not at all. So, so you don't have any plans to celebrate Hole again being number one 20 years later? Not currently. Was there, was there any plans in the works before lockdown? Not currently. Liz, give me the gossip. <laughs> you know no. full well what you're what doing. Tell it? me now. There's nothing I there's nothing I know of. There's nothing I know of that Liar! <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing I know. Honestly, I don't know anything, honestly. Um I'm calling the police on I you. I don't know anything. <laughs> no, I don't know anything, honestly. There's there's nothing. You just on you could just never say never. That's all mm. I'm saying. But I have to say, though, Jenny did say recently that she found it really hard. Like, she always had anxiety. Well, you know, we did an interview for Tasha's on Tasha's page, and she, Jenny said that she always found it really hard um, going on stage. She had a lot of anxiety. So for me, and we obviously, once we'd done this uh, interview together, us three, we all had, like, a drink together after, and we Zoomed each other again, and that FaceTimed each other again, and all had a couple of drinks on Zoom because it was in the middle of lockdown. Uh, like lockdown two, I think it was. Anyway, um, and I said, you know what? I never knew that you felt like that. She was like, yeah, yeah, you know, it was, it, was, um, it did, it was a scary time do, doing kit and stuff because it was just never something that she really loved in the first place. She loved being in the band, but the anxiety with going on stage was, um, was a lot for her. And I just went, oh, it's weird how like you knew people, but you didn't know people. And you didn't know what they were going through. You know, like when Tash wanted to leave, I didn't know what she was going through. Jenny having anxiety and I just just never knew stuff. Because you're all because you're all dealing with your own stuff, aren't you? You know what mm. I mean? So it's just it's mad. So I have to say, um, you know, Jenny, I don't I don't know if Jenny would want that. Right. So let me put myself forward. So I auditioned for <laughs> Melissa from Dream last week and she said I got the part. I've sang with Mushy from the Sugar Babes. I did Heidi's parts. So would you like me to do my audition? Absolutely. Right, babes. So <clears throat> you guys are Scouse royalty, so I'll have to do it in a Scouse accent. Oh, no. Oh, God. You're ready? <laughs> Give me a beat. Oh. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm really scared. I'm just scared about ready? the Scouse accent. Close your eyes. Oh, no. Oh, Give God. me your eyes, <laughs> darling. Oh, my God. Are you, are you like, a, what do they call them? The pearly... The, the pearly, the I Lambeth Walk people. What? what? You sounded cockney. <laughs> Close your eyes. Give me your hand. <laughs> I love it. Yes, you're in. No problem. Yes. Absolutely. Another exclusive. That's three bands I'm in now. I just need to get girls allowed now. And I got the full oh. one. Oh my God. That is so funny. I love it. I love it. What do you want to accomplish after lockdown? What's the first round of goals? What are we going to do? Oh, absolutely not. I want to get over to Korea, definitely. Um, and I want to go back to Japan, and I want to go to back to Nashville. I just want to get some writing done, definitely. And then I want to. Um, I was doing uh, in the hiatus that we had last year, the, between the two lockdowns. I had um, an acting thing. I, had a, I was on a BBC drama, um, and we recorded it in that um, sort of September time, and I loved it. And that comes out. I don't know when it comes out, actually. I think it comes out at the beginning of this year sometime. So I love that. And I so I would definitely want to do more of that. Because it was cool that people are looking at me in a different way now instead of just going, that's the girl from Atomic Kitten. So, yes, I want to do more of that for defo. They're like, this is the UK actress, Jeff. Yes, this is Jeff. Jeff McLaren. Rebranded, rebranded. Yes. So, yeah, that's what I fancy doing. Definitely, definitely traveling, like you said. Um, um, definitely meeting up with a handsome man 
and um, yeah that things like that really my ears are burning <laughs> Yes, you. You, Lee. Absolutely. Oh, me. What did you do um, for Valentine's Day? I got absolutely plastered in the kitchen alone. <laughs> well, I was, yeah, I was alone. I got flowers, but I was alone because, yeah. It's, it's getting to the stage in life He's where I can't away, even get so, sent yeah. a good death threat these days, <laughs> let alone a card. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, I got, I got something scary. Oh, it's still, it's get people are scary sometimes on, on the internet, aren't they? Very scary. I got... I got a thing today saying they hate me and Tash because we won't make any more music. I was like, well, that was me. Um, I was like, why, why, you hate, why do you hate me for that? I like, I don't know what to say. Oh no, because you don't care. And I was like, mm, I do care, but it's just like, <laughs> if, if that was, if that was written on a brick and thrown through your window, that was me. <laughs> and it just, and underneath it said, you are like justice for you so, are. Justice for you are absolutely. Sing it, you animals. <laughs> you should do these. I think you'd be good at doing podcasts, to be fair, Liz. Really? Why? Because I chat shit. <laughs> yes, because you chat shit. No. What about a book? No. What about a little book? Oh, never. I'd never do that. Never, ever. ever. What about a colouring book? <laughs> yeah, I'd do that. Colouring book. <laughs> My friend got a colouring book for lockdown and it's willies. What? You have to colour in willies. But it's like almost like some like art deco kind of willy thing and you have to colour it in and all like funny colours. It's all like witches. I love willies. <laughs> I, I I need to see this. I will okay, I'll get her to send to send me a picture and I will give it I'll send it to you. Honestly, it's a oh. willy colouring book. I bet you if you Google um like on Amazon willy colouring book, it it will be that colouring book. And she's oh such I don't God. know who bought it for her because she's such a prude as well. So it's really funny. All right, Jeff, this was great having you on the podcast today. <laughs> Thanks for joining me. Thank you very much for having me on. You've made me feel whole again. Hurrah. Have you ever encountered a, a drag queen performing whole again? Oh, several times. Yeah, absolutely. Several times. Have you ever seen Bag of Chips singing You Can Lick My Hole Again? I've seen several drag queens sing You Can Lick My Hole Again. <laughs> I've heard I've heard lots of other things as well, like uh, You've Got the Wrong Hole Again. Heard that one. Ooh. Um, so I, I can't remember the rest. That was a, that one probably stuck in my head a little bit, probably the most. To be fair, so yeah, hit, that hit that hits on a spiritual level. <laughs> I could, I relate, I relate to that song. <laughs> I, I I do like the song, but I have to say, like you, my one of my favourites would be "Is You Are" or I loved "Follow Me." I thought "Follow Me." Oh, "Follow Me." Yeah, what an underrated banger. Um, Before I let you go, however, I think it's only right that you issue a public apology to all of your fans for not releasing <laughs> You Are. <laughs> like it's my fault. Okay, totally. I do. I apologise to all and sundry um, for, for not releasing You Are. Um, I, um, I don't know why it didn't happen, but I, I, I wish it would happen in the future, maybe. You never know. In the future, you get could, the vinyl could, disc out. We could do a vinyl release. Yeah, re-record it. Mm. With me in the band now, because I've joined. Of course, you have joined. Yes, that's it. Oh, there we go. We do like to drop the Scouse accent when we sing, though, Lee. Just to let you know, we do. But my Scouse there. accent's really good. It is so good, but you, you know, you do have to drop it when you sing. Obviously, everyone who's British likes to sound American when they sing. Well, not anymore, actually. No one does that anymore, do they? But yeah, so that's mm. we have to drop the accent, sadly. Let's give my accent one last airing. Are you ready? Just just as a treat for everyone, yeah. Go on. It's like a dog teaching his chick how to quack. <laughs> Where the frick did you hear that? Who is... In a McDonald's in Liverpool. <laughs> it's like a dog trying to teach. So this is how I would say it. It's like a dog trying to che trying to teach a chicken how to quack. It's like a dog <laughs> trying to che teach his chick how to quack. <laughs> it's like. Yeah, like it's brilliant. It's like some Brummy Scouse hybrid. It's brilliant. I love it. <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah. Oh. All right. Thanks. Thanks for doing this, Liz. Oh, thank you for or having Jeff. Me. Yes, thank you, darling. Oh, Jeff, as you know, thank you so much. Right. See you later. Yeah, that's my alter ego. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Lots of love. Bye. Bye. Bye.